Praise the Lord. Let's lift our hands and bless his name. Father, we bless you for tonight. It's an opportunity to be in his presence. Lift your hands inside and outside and let's bless the King of glory. We have come before the only wise God, the one who is willing to change, to heal, to deliver. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are of your heart. of the anointing one encounter with the spirit of God can open up doors beyond your imagination cry from the depths of your heart be intentional about it the mighty God you. We declare that you are the beginning 
and the end. We thank you. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the measure of your royalty. shield for me the glory and the litter of my head very simple song of worship says but thou O oh Lord art a shield for me the glory and the litter let me sing it one more time. That's our testimony in this house. For thou art a shield for me, the glory and the lifter up of my head. My glory and the lifter of my head. For thou, Lord, art a shield. Let's sing it together. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. us tonight oh God we will never never forget your presence but there is nothing we can do without you we declare it we are not ashamed to let the world know that you are our glory we pride ourselves only in your presence it is of your fullness we have received tonight Lord we ask that you speak to the needs of your people challenge us there are people here trusting you for all kinds of encounters there are people here trusting you for healings for miracles for breakthroughs others trusting that you refire their lives and take them to new dimensions of the anointing i ask tonight that you minister to everyone in the name of jesus god bless you please greet one another and be seated hallelujah Let's see how fast we can go tonight so that we can finish early. Pray for me. We're really working on our timing. We want to see how God will grant us grace so that I'll finish fast. Um, by God's grace, we'll make sure that we hasten every activity before my coming up so that we can have time for the word. Sorry, this is not a regular ministry. And so you find out that there's no room for drama and all of these kinds of things. Praise the Lord. 
and and all the things we believe that days will come when we'll have time for that hallelujah announcements and all of these kinds of things praise the lord tonight your life will change in a dramatic way in the name of jesus christ what I'm about to teach you will transform your life. Honestly, I'm determined this year to make sure by the grace of God that we all experience the reality of the rain. Let it not just be a song that we keep singing again and again and again. Hallelujah. We're trusting that God will really, really grant us grace. And so all the teachings that will be coming, please, I want you to pay attention, especially today's teaching. Hallelujah. I was talking to the Lord a few days ago about us, the house, and um, I really appreciated him for what he's doing, but let me start on this note. I'm a bit concerned um, at our pace of both spiritual progress and otherwise. Hallelujah. I am very, very humbled. I... As we travel around ministering the word of God, I am amazed, not, not necessarily surprised, but amazed at the impact and the transformation that this ministry and the teaching is bringing in the lives of people. We, we receive testimonies, thousands and thousands of testimonies um, from lives but then every one of them come fresh they come very fresh and really impactful um, when we begin to share maybe one day we'll have the opportunity to share some of these testimonies and you won't believe the encounters the breakthroughs there are whole churches that play koinonia messages and just sit down under that anointing and get blessed and there are all kinds of miracles that have happened to people. Liftings, encounters, you know. I think one of the greatest testimonies is the encounter that people have through the messages. Angelic encounters, heavenly encounters. They step into levels of the anointing. And some of them have never been here. Never been here. There are people, there are ministries, there are pastors that travel kilometers to come. And so I'm a bit concerned that we who are here, that God has granted us the privilege to directly sit down under this very heavy unction. I am a bit disturbed as to why the pace of our growth is a bit slow. Um, and I, I began to ask God, because I care about us. I don't just care about myself. Left for me, I am, I am bent on walking with God. And receiving testimonies from that relationship. But every true leader prides himself in the joy of the people. Hallelujah. If only the leaders succeed, we're the only ones getting blessed and prosperous and lifted and anointed, you know. And God is expanding and increasing our influence. Many leaders will rejoice at that. But my joy is to see that as we rise everyone who sits under this anointing becomes a first hand epistle of the vision hallelujah so i'm a bit concerned honestly i am um, not necessarily worried but i began to ask the lord because i know that the problem is not with the quality of the word hallelujah by the grace of god we may not be the best but i think we have done well in bringing the word of god in due season so i i really began to talk to the lord about it i expect 10 times the results that we see in our lives there are people who are afar off never seen me not even my picture some of them have had just one message just one encounter just one there are people who have just one koinonia message just one koinonia teachings are so powerful it doesn't matter which of them you get you produce the same thing. Even if it's on marriage and what you need is healing. It doesn't matter. Just get that atmosphere. Hallelujah. And so I, I really, I want us to take, we are, not, we are not playing games. Praise the Lord. 
this is a real ministry we are very disciplined and serious with the assignment that god has given us there is a revolution going on in this nation and i can tell you with all humility that we are contributing significantly to the spiritual renaissance that god is doing especially in the lives of the generations that are coming i am humbled by those who have access to these teachings i have met kings i have met politicians i have met nobles i have met people who my level of life would never have afforded me to meet all on account of the grace of god and what he is doing praise the lord and i expect that um those of us who are sitting down please volume directly under this anointing we should be able to walk first hand many of us have access to me there's counseling sessions even after the meeting we can even if it's a handshake a hug whatever it is you sit down directly under the worship under the prayer and all of that and, and so it is either one of two things number one either you are not really interested in pursuing this reality of the divine life to be at work in you hallelujah either there is a direct negligence or there is creeping in subtly the danger of familiarity hallelujah familiarity is a disastrous thing it has a way of destroying you hallelujah praise the lord one time reverend dr umar Upai shared a touching testimony many years ago i heard him preach and he said that um, his brother and the brother's friend needed a miracle and it was it was a financial miracle they really needed a miracle from god and the brother went to him and said um can you give me some money and he said you're my brother i can't deny it and he gave him some money but the friend came and said man of god i really need a miracle and he prophesied and spoke to the person and said your bands will never run dry two people same need different results hallelujah there is if your life does not change under this unction i guarantee you something is wrong with your approach god is in this place hallelujah i was humbled by the testimony of our dear sister and um, it doesn't take too much to see the hand of god it just takes you being disciplined and follow instructions the problem with many of us is there is this spiritual stubbornness you know what we call i too know mentality physically see it's a it's a foolish thing when you don't have results in your life and you keep arguing with the words that come hallelujah have you seen students like that in class their cgpa is low they are not doing well yet they argue with the lecturer again and again and then those who are very serious those who are exceptional they sit down diligently there is an attitude look let me tell you the ball is in your court you have to choose you see people changing there are people who are changing there are testimonies that are coming you are the only one who is left you can choose to argue it and watch sick people get healed and watch god change the story of people look at people oh my god look let me tell you if i begin to share with you some of these testimonies hallelujah very humbling testimonies of the hand of god hallelujah we are too small to doubt the might of god do you know how far god can take you brothers and sisters? forget about your age look if you want to receive from God, I'm speaking to especially many of us who are students, you must remove this student mentality and bury it and, and, and know that you are only a student for a few moments. Many of us, this dependency mentality has crippled us. You have graduated for five years now, but you still believe Koinonia is not a fellowship. Koinonia is an apostolic and a prophetic move of God. It's not some kind of campus thing for just young people. Hallelujah. Please be determined that there must be an evidence in your life. 
Hallelujah. There must be an evidence in your life, brothers and sisters. And this is, this is my goal. I cry before God every time I pray for us. And I say, Lord, please let your people, even if it means not blessing me, no problem. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy, that's what must happen to you. My status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. One more time, prophesy to yourself. My status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. On my way. On my way. To better days. Prophesy, you're on your way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. It's a better day. It's a better day. Better day. Sing, status is changing. Come on. Status is changing. The word of God is doing so something to you. Line. We're on our way. I'm on my way. Better day. There is a better tomorrow. I tell you, forget about today. My status is changing. There's no more decline. We're on our way to better day. We're on our way. We're on our way. On our way. That's the destiny of this ministry. Better day. We're on our way. On our way. On our way. To better day. We're on our way. On our way. You can choose to take the flight or not. But I tell you, God is going somewhere with us. To better day. Prophesy to yourself. It's part of the meeting. We're on our way. That His glory will change something in your life. I'm on my way. To better day. To better day. To better day. We're on our way. On our way. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. Hear me. It doesn't take time. It just takes having access to the keys. It doesn't take a lot of stories and discussion. There is what you can hold on to. When you catch it, you have caught it. It will change your life. Men will talk. They will only talk for nonsense. You will only be moving like a star that cannot be stopped. But the question is, are you willing? It's not enough to just listen. There is no situation you are in that is the worst in the earth. There are people in a worse situation. But this word has taken them out of it and honored them. It may look like there is a delay. But you must tell yourself the glory of God is changing me. This is already a word for somebody tonight. You may not look like it. Brothers and sisters, forget about it. Your status is changing there's no more decline. You're on your way to better day. Let them laugh at you today. Your status is changing. Your status is changing. There's no more decline. There's no more decline. You're on your way. You're on your way to better day. Prophesy to yourself. My status is changing. Spiritually, financially. In every respect, no more I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better day. I'm on my way. 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 To 
better days. Better days. I'm on my way. On my way. pray and say Lord give me focus help me to settle with the word whatever distracts me whatever distracts me whatever is robbing my life I'm ready to be a student I'm ready to submit myself go ahead and pray I'm ready to lay down my pride to get what works I'm ready to submit myself I'm ready to lay down my pride. I repent from arguing with the word. Give me the keys, so oh God. Let my hands handle them. Pray. I lay down my pride. I lay down my pride. I submit to the word of God. I lay down every argument, every vain talk. I submit to the word. I want to see results in my life. There is something I do not know. Show me, oh God. There is something that connects me to the next level. You are changing the life of others. Don't forget about me. I am willing. You are changing the life of others. I am willing. You are changing the story of others. I am willing. I take my eyes away from my failures. I take my eyes away from limitations. I take my eyes away from criticisms. I am not stiff-necked. I am not stubborn. I am malleable to your word. Yes, Lord, I submit to your word. It has changed many. It has produced champions and generals. We're on our way. On our way. We're on our way. To better day. I'd like you to see your future and prophesy. I'm on my way. Oh, they will hear my voice. They will see his glory upon my life. On my way to better days. To better days. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We submit to your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please pick up your Bible, First John chapter 5, verse 4. God bless you. Let's get straight to the word. There is a lot to talk about. First John 5, verse 4. Please pay attention. If you are here, sit down, sit down, sit down. God bless you. Please look up, everyone, before we read that scripture. I expect everyone coming for Koinonia to at least buy a book like this. Praise the Lord. All these pieces of papers we have that we throw powerful revelations on it. Get something like this. Please, pay attention. Just be a student for a while and let the world honor you. Forget about pride, please. I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Young and old, rich or poor, whatever you, when you come to the presence of God, just follow instructions. Your next dimension is in the instruction you follow. Hallelujah. Don't be too, don't do big manism before God. For the kingdom is for children. Get a notebook. Get a good biro. Don't 
come around if, if, if you have devices or phones that you can you can you know record and write very well do so don't just sit down and be careless when you are inviting others let them know that they are not just coming for fellowship hallelujah if you love them enough buy it and give them buy it there are lots of jotters that we get from wedding free huh Instead of writing your problems on it and writing all the people that hurt you, why don't you bring it, sow it as a seed to somebody? Get this. This is my own notebook. There are many others like this. It shows that you respect what God is teaching you. In the book of Revelation, when John saw everything, he told him, write. He didn't say, think about it. He didn't say, crime it. He said, write, for these words are faithful and true. When prophet Elisha was passing and the Shunammite woman perceived that this was a holy man of God, when they decorated his room, they kept a table for him there so that he would write. The ancient wrote, you must write. Hallelujah. Please, when you come, that's why we have time to say hug one another. When we say hug, hug. When we say sit down and listen, no loitering around, walking around, pinching this is is demonic it's not just bad it's demonic i'm telling you it's, it's the spirit of distraction your mind cannot do too many things at once hallelujah when the word is coming that's when you remember that oh i i need to do this i need to do that somebody is pinging you you are pinging the person it's demonic pay attention hallelujah please inside and outside even if you don't have a seat pay attention somebody is smiling and telling you have you seen their uniform tell the person please don't distract me i'm tired of my situation and my life must change don't distract me if you say it once you won't repeat it again but by the time you start entertaining nonsense in the middle of something powerful that should liberate you the person will say can you imagine was it a uh, that we've won, how much did you even say it? This is not the place to discuss all this for God's sake. Of course, we appreciate ourselves. But if you don't place value for the word, it will never change you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First John chapter 5. You will thank me tomorrow. You may not like me today. But I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Many are already thanking me. And those who didn't listen are now listening in a painful way. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words be First John 5 verse 4. Everyone read is projected. One, two, read. And this is the victory that overcomes. What is it? Even replace our with my. Are you ready? Read it one more time. Even my faith. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 tells us that the just shall live by faith Hebrews 10 verse 38 media you have to really help us today let's see how we can rush I want us to finish on time Hebrews 10 38 it says the just shall live by faith in fact frankly speaking four times in scripture it is recorded that the just shall live by faith but I'll just speak to Hebrews 10 verse 38 Hallelujah. It says, now the just shall live by what? Faith. faith. But if any man draw back, draw back in what? In living by faith. It says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The just shall live. Let me interpret it for you. The quality of your life here on earth is dependent on your understanding of what faith is and how it works. And this is what I'm going to be teaching you tonight what faith is and how it works the operation the dynamics that's what i would have taught last week 
but I was away and, and the Holy Spirit told me, no, you must teach this. My people need to hear it because they need to understand not just what faith is, but how it works. True Bible faith that will produce results for you. Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 4. It personalizes it in a very powerful way. I love the prophet. He said, the just shall live by his faith. Not your neighbor's faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. It says, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live. By what? You will prosper by your understanding of faith. You will step into the anointing and the glory of God. The quality, the measure of the glory and the grace of God you will see in your life is dependent on faith. There are, there are free seats here. Please let it be a tradition from now that every time we begin the service, if there are people standing, some people should sit on their seats. There is a vacant seat here. There is another one that I see. I don't know why there should be those seats. There are people standing outside. Please, ushers, you should know that. Let's, let's occupy all the seats, please. Hallelujah. The just shall live by his faith. Everyone say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works. One more time. Say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works praise the lord the subject of faith is very important for the christian experience um there have been many teachings on faith many many teachings in fact it's been the core teaching in many christian circles but there are a lot of misunderstandings about the true operation of faith and i trust that god will help us to be able to balance it i want to go really straight to the point and that very very fast hallelujah it's not that our regular or popular teachings on faith are wrong but many teachings about faith please look up many teachings about faith are not complete faith is an equation Faith is a formula. Are you following me now? And the components must be complete for it to work. Here and there, different men of God, preachers, great men and women of God have caught certain dimensions of what faith is and how it works. But to be able to give it a very balanced scope such that it works for those who practice it is where the problem has been. Hallelujah. Let's look at a few, um, a few incomplete revelations of faith that have come to the body of Christ. Number one, or some corrections on the imbalances. Number one, it has been popularly taught that faith is believing. No, that's not it at all. Faith is not just believing. That's the point I want you to get. Be to believe is very important. It's part of the equation of faith. But it's not all there is to faith. You see that? For somebody straight up, this is your deliverance. Because you have been taught that faith is just believing. If you believe, that's all. No, sir. I can tell you this categorically. That's not the whole equation. Belief talks of conviction. Belief talks of persuasion. When you believe a thing, it means that you are convicted. It means that you are persuaded. But it does not mean it will produce for you. Please, let's understand that. Belief is part of the process of manifesting faith, but not all of it. It is part of it, but it is not all of it. Please get this revelation. Oh, I believe God, I believe God, I believe God. Wonderful. That's only a step. That's not everything. Many of us, innocent believers, have stopped there. Believing God is not enough. Belief talks of your conviction. It is part of the overall equation. 
but it is not all of it. Number two, faith is not just confession. Mm. Body of Christ. Faith is not just confession. I'm dictating it so that you will write. Confession is part of the process of manifesting faith, but not all of it. Please, you must get this. Confession. In the equation of faith, there is a point where confession comes in, but that is not all there is to Bible faith. See that? Many of us have been taught by well-meaning people through the years in our different Christian circles across this nation and for those listening outside of this nation and all of that, we've been taught that all there is to faith is just speak. When you speak it, you have it. No, sir. I tell you the truth from God's word and from this Bible. No, sir. It doesn't happen that way. Are you getting blessed? Hmm. So, faith it's not just confession. You must realize this. If confession were all that there was to manifesting faith, I guarantee you there are people who would have been living like angels in the earth today because there are people who speak. I'm not against confession. There is a place. Remember in our teaching, spiritual laws. There is a place. Confession activates. There is a law of speech and sound. But that's not the only law. So it is true that confession is part of the process of manifesting faith. But not all of it. So believing is not all of it. It's only part of it. Confession is not all of it. It's only part of it. Number three. Faith is not just sowing seeds. Faith is not just sowing seeds. Many in the body of Christ have been taught that faith is equal to seed sown. No, sir. Sowing of seeds is also part of the equation. It's activating the law of seed time and harvest. But that is not all there is. You see the imperfections. So when I camp around believing, on one side we have those who believe. Just believe. And if you really believe, it happens. That's not exactly true. Hallelujah. Or confess. And if you confess, that's all. No, that's not exactly true. Or sow seeds. The moment you are trusting God for a house, you sow a seed for that house and go and rest and it happens. No, sir. No, sir. There is an equation. God is not a fraud star. Are you getting my point? That, those kinds of attitudes make God look like a 419er. Right? And this is the reason why many people write against men of God in newspapers. They call us all kinds of things. They call us money mongers. They call us uh, metaphysical people. They call us talkatives because the incomplete teaching. See, let me tell you something. Especially for those of us who are men of God here or will be called into ministry. Realize that the church is an institution. Both a spiritual institution and a social institution we influence culture we shape people the mindset in nigeria has largely been altered through the church for good now are you getting me nigeria is said to be the most religious country in the whole world and this is because of the presence and the influence of the church there is a place that the church is playing in nation building and, and that, that puts a lot of pressure on the man of God. Because what that means is when you mislead people, it will create a ripple effect. Right? There are some of you, as you come and sit down under this anointing, as you hear the things I preach, you take them, some of you verbatim, back to your fellowships, your members, because you believe you want them to receive the same result. And that means I must be careful. If I teach you error, it becomes harder to correct it when it has left me. Are you seeing how error grows? Because when you go now and you are communicating to your churches or your groups or your fellowships, it may not be exactly as I said it. It will be based on what you understand. Right? By what I said. And so, the, the error keeps multiplying as it goes down the line. That's why we pray in the spirit for accuracy of utterance. So that we can communicate only that which is consistent with the mind of God. Are you blessed? So faith 
is not just believing. Never forget this. Number two, faith is not just confession. The word confess comes from the Hebrew word homologio. It means repeat as you have heard. So there is a place for that. The law of sound. The creative power of spoken words. But that's not all there is. Now I understand that there are times that we men of God take this aspect fragment by fragment. And, and I understand that. That's not what I'm talking about. There are people who have taken this in koinonia. We have examined all of these aspects in details one by one. And that is just for understanding. But when it comes to manifesting faith, you must be able to piece up all the fragments together. Are you getting my point now? To complete the equation. Otherwise, what you are doing is not Bible faith. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Faith is not just about sowing seeds. Otherwise, what difference do we have with those who just give charity around? There are unbelievers who sow cars, sow houses. Is that true? Faith is a law. Never forget this. Faith is a law, meaning it works anywhere it is accurately practiced. When it is released anywhere, a law is not something that is territorial necessarily. It's a principle that works anywhere it is diligently practiced. Salt is salt in Nigeria. Salt is salt in Bangladesh. Salt is salt in Israel. Salt is salt in Ukraine. Salt is salt in the Bahamas. Hallelujah. A gun is a gun in Nigeria. Right? A gun is a gun in Israel. What a gun can do in Nigeria, it can do in UK. That's how faith is. It's a law. So write very quickly. The principles of manifesting the faith that works. The principle of manifesting the faith that works. I'm being very simple tonight because I really want us to get this. This is very core and foundational to our understanding and our success in life. The principle of manifesting the faith that works. Let me have two people, please. Any two people? Come. Please watch this. Stand here, Benga. You stand here. Promise. Watch this. Why is faith very important in the life of the believer? I want you to watch these people. This is... Hold this. This is God wanting to reach out to man. This is the blessing. Watch this. This is the breakthrough. This is the healing. This is the prosperity. This is the new level of grace. This is the insight. Are you getting me? And here is man. God so designed it that there is between God, his desire to bless you and down at your end, your desire to receive. There is a law that connects that. That law is called faith. Are you getting me now? Faith is important because it is the biblical platform that authorizes God's power to come into your life. Faith is the platform that authorizes God's ability. My brother wants to see the power of God. And it's not like God's ability is crippled. Lord, I want prosperity. Lord, I want healing. Lord, I want a miracle. Take me to another level. I want to begin to have encounters in the spirit. This is it. This is it. Fully paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right? And this is another imbalance that preachers say. The fact that a thing has been paid for does not mean it comes to you automatically. Is that true? I can pay for something and tell you when you go to the supermarket, it's paid for. But that does not mean it has been delivered automatically. See that? Faith. Faith is what connects you. Watch this. This brother is standing desperate. Oh God, would you not change my situation? 10 years, 15 years, nothing has changed. He's born again. He believes in Jesus. He believes Jesus died. 
He's a tongue talker. Maybe he even pays tithe in church. So seeds. Confesses the word. But nothing is changing. Because this connection. Are you seeing it now? God is asking that you authorize him. There is a connection. Between the power of God. And where it is needed in this earth realm. Faith. Are we following now? Between you and that breakthrough is your ability to connect are you willing to authorize the hand of his majesty he wants to come make no mistakes about it god wants to reveal himself as a loving god the love of god compels him to want to bless us but the problem is that we have not been taught how to connect stretch your hands promise and connect this this is faith once you lay hold on this then there is, there's no limit again there are many of us, thank you very much, guys. God bless you. And I don't know what they were thinking about. They're thinking, they're always thinking in partition. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's why I gave the example from beginning so that your, your desires will not be disappointed. Praise the Lord. Could it be, brothers and sisters, that where you are, where your family is, is not just because the devil is so powerful. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not just because you may not be praying correctly, but maybe you have not been taught. There is nothing wrong in not knowing. The problem is when you are not willing to learn. Hallelujah. Faith is the platform. Never forget this. This is why we need faith. The platform that authorizes God's ability to be made manifest in a person's life. God needs an authorization to step into your life because he gave man willpower. When he said, let them have dominion, it became scripturally incorrect for God to interfere with man's life just like that. No. He needs an authorization. That's why the Bible says in the book of Revelations, it said, behold, I stand. And what? And what? This is God speaking. Why will he be knocking? Won't he just step in and say, I created you. Open that door whether you want it or not. No. Behold, I stand and knock. And I will keep knocking for as long as you are willing to open it. Tonight, may we authorize God to step into our lives. And he will see how small many situations are. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, the faith of God is at work in me. So what then is this equation of faith? How does it work? Now that we know that faith is not just, um, I would define faith at the end of the teaching, but that the workings of faith, we have little bits and pieces of it. So here and there we confess the word and we seem to have some consolation, but nothing major happens. Here and there we sow seeds, very good. But then that's not all there is. Here and there, we, we um, do what again? We are convicted. Oh Lord, I believe you. Are you not the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? God says, yes, so oh, I am. Huh? Are you not the one that parted the Red Sea? God will say, of course. Why are you not parting my situation? And then God says, allow me. Authorize me. Authorize me. That's why the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. I repeat, the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life, meaning I don't do anything. All I have to do, after all, I was a sinner. You are the one who died for me. I didn't ask you. Now that you have died for me, make sure that everything goes well. Give me tea. Give me bread. Do everything for me. See that? And there is an imbalance of the grace message that if not careful, stretches to that limit where it tells you God should do everything for you. No, sir. There are two dimensions of grace. Let me say it very quickly. I've listened to a lot of great mess, grace messages by different men and women of God and I agree absolutely with them in many aspects. There may just be a need for some little adjustments here and there who's that what's wrong with her she's sick huh who brought her 
you came with her. Hold her now, protocol, and let her talk. Huh? Please hold the mother and let the lady come. Come, you. You can hold the mother. What's wrong? Her kidneys. Hold on, please. Where are you taking her? No. Bring her. It's a spirit. Bring her. It's not that she's restless and she wants to go out. It's the spirit. That's what happens to many people when they come for miracle service. Once I come up, you see them restless. They say, I'm going. It's a spirit. How long has this been? Huh? Can she talk? Mama, how are you? How long are you? Her brother, how long has this been? Her kidneys are what? Renal failure. Shika, you believe that Jesus will change all this? As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. time come on sing imagine this where your mother Jesus don't cry don't cry in the name of Jesus the anointing is on all of you all three of you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I cause this devil of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. I command brand new kidneys right now. Mommy, brand new kidneys in the name of Jesus. I cause that devil of infirmity. I see you in the spirit. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Renal failure, I cause you by the blood of the eternal covenant. I curse you. 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 Hallelujah. Mama, look at me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am healed. I am. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am. I am. Look at me. Everybody leave her. Leave her alone. Come. Come. Help her. Come. Help her. Hold this please. Help her. That devil is a liar. Please put this in. Walk. Come. Leave her. Don't hold her. Just guide her. Come. Come. Just turn around. Turn around. Help her. Turn around. Come. Kidney failure. That devil is. Look at she's happy. Look at what is happening. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come. That devil is a liar. Let her come. Let her come. Help her. Just guide her. Let her come. That devil is a liar. Lift your legs, mama. Go ahead. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. In the name of Jesus. Listen, this is witchcraft. Your mother would have died on Sunday. They would have told you this woman is dead. She would have slept like that and woken up. Because as I looked, I saw the spirit. And I was looking, I said, what is this? And they were carrying her out. Look, it's better for them to come and die here than to get up. We are not playing games. This just came to prove the teaching. I'm about to say some other things. You must believe. They, they believed God, but they didn't stop there.
they would have stayed in Shika and this woman would have died because I see in a vision Sunday they would have said it's over huh? don't cry don't, don't cry gently in the name of Jesus mama I assure you you will come back and stand here to give your testimony that wicked spirit that has been tormenting you huh? go and look has she been eating she has not been eating because the Holy Ghost is ministering to me that mama is hungry find something for her to eat God bless you take her Lift your hands and let's bless his name for one minute. Please sit down, sit down, sit down. Let's hurry up. Let's continue. Sorry about that. There is a spiritual strategy for manifesting faith. Just like we saw. I don't know how long our mother has been but in seconds you can authorize the power of God see I already sense the healing anointing so as you are listening to me if you are sick here this is always what happens because when once one miracle happens the water is stirred right very important brothers and sisters listen it's not like these guys could not have prayed for mama there is nothing special about me this is what i want you to understand the goal i know some of you are saying i don't agree there's just listen to what i'm telling you you know you know as i preach i i discern your thoughts i know what you are agreeing with and what you are not agreeing with Hallelujah. The equation of faith. Let me give you an equation of faith that if you practice, I guarantee you are touching the integrity of the maker of heaven. You will be shocked at what your life will become. It will begin to produce immediate results for you. Immediate results. Hallelujah. Pray in tongues for one minute as we prepare to receive this. We're hurrying up. Please take it serious. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Don't just hear. Don't just look. See. Inside and outside. Pray in tongues. Participate. Open our eyes. We submit to you. Great Spirit of God. Open our eyes. And this is the faith that overcomes. Even our faith. This is. Number one. The faith of God that produces results in your life always starts with revelation. Bible faith, please hear me, always starts with revelation. You can never manifest true faith until there is a revelation. A revelation. The first piece of the equation of faith is revelation. And there are two dimensions to revelation. Please look up. The first is study. 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 And the second is meditation. You don't have revelation just by wishing. Study. It first starts by searching out. You cannot have faith in what you do not know. I love this baby. Come. Ah, she's afraid. She's going to run to her mother now. <laughs> May God bless. One, one of these days, our children will open the service for us. All of them will just hold the mic and blast in tongues for 10 minutes. 
Oh yes, many of them pray in tongues. At their age, we didn't even know whether, but, but God is doing a lot of work in our children. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. Revelation. So it starts with diligently searching. Everybody say diligently searching. Now the problem with many believers, you cannot spend your life just reading newspapers, chase magazines, name them, all those kinds of rubbish and expect to have Bible faith. Even if there is a column where a man of God quickly shared something, faith doesn't come that way. Brothers and sisters, there is an investment you must make in studying the word. Look at me. This is your promised land. You must walk through it. Every time you read the Bible, it's like you are walking through your promised land to see what God has given you, to see what has been apportioned to you. So as I study this, I see, Halabakatayada, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall also do greater works than this. As I study, I begin to see, if ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day. Right? That you will be exalted above all nations and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Are you getting my point? When you are studying the Bible, imagine that you are walking around your land of promise. When you study the Bible, you are seeing the things that have been paid for. Are you getting my point? That cancer is killing you and you take the Bible and you search. And you see where he hung on that cross and he said, it is finished. But that has not entered you. You are aware. Remember, you are getting revelation and this is only the first part. That's why I'm telling you what many people call faith is not faith. So I begin to walk around the promised land. Like he told Abraham, he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes and look eastward, northward. That's what you do. When you begin to study, it's like you are walking through your land of promise. Brothers and sisters, you may be soaking Gary, just walk through the land. Mm. You, are, you are no problem. There is no stove to boil the Indomie. Break it. As you are eating, walk. Walk. <laughs> you think I don't know how that thing works? be fooled by what you see there is a testimony of the transition of faith see that I was sharing with a lady that once upon a time I used to buy bread and cut it and put granite there's a way you arrange it so that with every bite you know the whole surface area is covered you push it in you are not the first to do it. So all that insult you've been insulting God, you said, look, there are people who did not even have the bread. Right? And God brought them out of it. So he will, he will bring you up. We just sang that our status is changing. But it starts as I walk through the land of promise. Everybody say the word of God is my land of promise. Say one more time, the word of God. I know tonight's teaching is very simple, but don't trivialize the power of it. The word of God is my land of promise. Ha! So I study, brothers and sisters. See, as I'm, I, I feel like just sitting down to start studying the Bible. As I'm just talking to you now. A weak person, a non-entity, nobody knows you. But when you walk through that land of promise, you are already engaging something. You may not understand. There's, I'm not denying the, look, I'm not denying the fact that you are in pain. Don't get me wrong. Faith does not deny what is happening. You see that? Aha. Uh -huh. So if I'm sick and I say, I have a headache, it's not negative confession. No. Please. If you want to say you are well, say you are well. But if I'm sick and I tell you something is, is pinching me here, it's not lack of faith. Are you getting my point? Many of us have felt so guilty. We don't even know when you are serious, when you are saying the real thing or not. You say, bros, can we get 20 naira? I say, I'm rich. Say, no, no, no. The issue is. You know, if you don't want to say, okay, there's nothing exactly in the pocket. Please, don't feel embarrassed. Don't make it look like the word of God makes you a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't just speak anyhow and then things change. Speaking is a law. The Bible says, a curse causeless shall not stand. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? So don't just say if I speak anyhow, whether I believe it or not, something I mean, be wise. That's why we are growing. Praise God. Study. So I walk through this thing. Look, let me tell you how I study. Let me show you how I study. I don't study foolishly. I study strategically. Everybody says strategically. My goal of studying the Bible is not to cram scriptures. There are real needs on ground. Cramming does very little in helping you produce results. I hope you are aware. You can cram Genesis to Revelation. The part you truly act out in faith is the part that works for you. Is that true? So, I write different aspects of my life that I want to see the glory of God revealed. I write ministry. I write my finances. Are you following me now? Different aspects. And I begin to walk through the garden of the Lord. My promised land. Finding out what God's idea. What are his promises? What is his? What does his word have to tell me about this? How far can I be anointed? To what limit? The problem is, you see the reason why the devil kills your word study life. Right? See, when the devil wants to destroy you, there are three things he just attacks. It's very easy. Number one, he kills your word life. Number two, he kills your prayer life. Number three, he kills your corporate fellowship life. When these three are dead, you are finished. It's as simple as that. Just three things. You want to go and study and all of a sudden that lukewarmness. Notice, ladies, you've read novels that are two times larger than this. But to read just three or four pages, that's to tell you there is a devil that does not want you to see something. Are you getting my point? I can give you a storybook and you can read. Many of you have gone to the library you have gone to different things. There are many people who in your place of work, you are given tasks that require you reading voluminous books and you do all of that within a week. But how come when it comes to studying this, you thought it's because the letters are small. You brought, you bought large letter edition. It's still, it's big. There, is a, there is a spirit. Hallelujah. Everybody says study. It starts there. Let me not deceive you, brothers and sisters. Faith is not cheap. If you understand this, you will respect everyone who walks by faith. True Bible faith starts the encounter of the word. When you study, you find the promises. When you find the promises, the next thing is meditation. Everybody say meditation. It's still part of getting to the point of revelation. I'm trying to break down how faith truly works. Say meditation. What is meditation? The word meditation as, as is it, not just to, to speak aloud. The word meditation is the process that makes a revelation become your own. You see that? Okay, now you are studying. He told Peter, for instance, cast your net to the right side. How does that story relate to your situation in Zaria? Meditation. Meditation begins to draw out the spirit of that word. It begins to personalize it. It's in the place of meditation that some of us even have encounters. Real encounters. While you are meditating under a heavy unction, you can sleep and then you have a dream. In that dream, you can have encounters. Some of you can see men of God. Some of you can see people. And that thing crystallizes your conviction. You get up and hold that scripture and say, I caught this. See that? When, when there is meditation, the end of it is conviction. The whole goal of revelation is to bring you to a point of conviction. Another word is persuasion. I'm showing you how Bible faith starts. Persuasion. Persuasion. If you are not persuaded, you cannot finish the equation. Because you will doubt on the way. So you must strengthen your persuasion before the journey begins. Hallelujah. You don't believe in tithing. You just did it because your pastor laughs at you and said, look, you have not been paying tithe. I'm, I'm watching those who are standing. 
I'm working in the same office with you. It's, it's me that pays your salary. Eh? And, and you get angry. And you get afraid. And so just to please your pastor, you just squeeze your envelope and frown and stand. And you lift it up. Let him see you. Oh, I'm dropping it now. You won't be blessed that way. That's mechanical. I never do things until I have the revelation for them. It's painful to do a thing without having the revelation. You will be trying to copy others. And after wasting your time, you won't get their results. Don't be hasty in doing anything. Get a revelation. Hallelujah. Do you spend time meditating? Let me tell you, one of the greatest key to meditation is silence. Many of us are too noisy for the word of God to become alive in us. It's God speaking to us. There are times in the night, late in the night, I just carry a chair and I go outside and I just sit down. No noise. All the noise makers are asleep. And I just sit down. And I'm just praying in tongues. Thank you Lord Jesus. Sometimes I could just carry. Worship is not noise. You can have that faint atmosphere of worship. And you're just sitting down. All of a sudden. A scripture like an arrow. Will fire into your spirit. When you share it with somebody. You'll be disappointed that they don't jump at it the way you jump. Because it's a revelation to you. Have you ever shared a scripture with somebody and said, my goodness, my brother, you are slapping your head while you are talking. You say, ah, this is not last week's coin. On your and you live there so sad and disappointed. Don't be disappointed. They are life to those who find them. To those who find them. It has become your revelation. Now you are ready to move to the next level. Are we following now? So the equation starts with what? Number one is revelation. And under revelation, it takes study and meditation. When a revelation has truly entered your spirit, it will bring conviction. Listen, I've said it again and again and let me repeat it. Revelation is not knowing what God has said. That's study. Revelation is knowing what it takes to make it work in your life. Hmm. Number two, the second dimension... The moment conviction and persuasion is there, you believe it. That's why many of us stop. But that's not all there is. Let me shock you. The next dimension to the equation of faith is prayer. And I'll tell you why. It's not just acting. It's prayer. Listen to me. I'm telling you what works. Prayer. When you catch a revelation, the next thing is not to run. You will miss something major. This is where a lot of people miss it. Are you getting it now? When you catch a revelation, brothers and sisters, the next dimension is prayer. An investment praying in tongues. I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of praying in tongues, real fluent spiritual tongues given by the Holy Ghost, contend for it. We are more than ready to minister to you here. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost has settled this issue of tongues or no tongues in the body of Christ. You are the only one who has not had the revelation. It's a done deal. It's a settled thing. The advantages of praying in the spirit is, is beyond any denominational barrier or whatever it is. What does prayer do to you? Two things. Prayer reveals the strategy. Kabbalah katabala. It's not enough to know what God wants to do. There is always what you must do to commit God. Prayer is where you get the strategy. Hear me. It is not every place in scripture where the condition is verbatim. There are some situations that are customized to you. Let me give you an instance. You now read how Jesus healed blind Bartimaeus, Right? Or how God opened the womb of Anna. I'm a, okay, well, I'm not a woman. I wanted to use an example. Of... <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, but imagine that there is a woman who is buried, unable to take in, and now she begins to meditate, seeing the ministry of fruitfulness all in the Bible, all the scriptures that God has placed for fruitfulness, and all the barren women in the Bible who God opened their womb. She's studying, and in it, she begins to find spiritual keys. 
Are you getting my point? What they did, it does not mean you just, you can stand up. Your situation may not afford you the opportunity to do exactly what they did. For instance, some people left to Jericho. Where is your own Jericho? That you, are you getting me? It is in the place of prayer. The Holy Ghost gives you your customized strategy. Are you getting my point? Two things happen in prayer. We are, we are a praying ministry. See, you must be a man of prayer to appreciate what I'm saying. If you don't pray, it won't make sense to you. As you begin to pray, the strategy comes. You can't obey until the instruction comes. Are you getting my point? Strategy. So I begin to pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, a crowd is packing full here. How are we going to get another venue? And I'm praying, humanly speaking, there may not be another venue. Lord, we thank you. What are you saying? And I begin to study the wilderness ministry of Jesus. How did they manage the crowds? What did they do? But we are not in the wilderness. So I need a rema. Are you getting my point? Prayer is what brings the spirit of the revelation. And then you will hear a word for you. Sometimes you can be praying. It is in the place of prayer that you get the customized revelation. And then two things happen. Number one, I told you, you get the strategy or the instruction. The second thing is you receive the grace supplied for obedience. You can never obey God until grace is given to you. Because some of the instructions that you will get from the place of prayer will be too hard. Some of the instructions may be empty your account. Some of the instructions may be pray all through the night. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Some of the instructions may be make sure you come and buy water here for three weeks. All kinds of instructions. That's why he not only gives you strategy, he releases the grace. Many people try to obey without the grace. This is the two-part dimension of grace that I want to explain to you. There is the dimension of grace that brings you into the finished work of Christ. And there is the dimension of grace supplied to you to obey, to actualize it. Right? It has been paid for, but you need grace to ensure its delivery. Someone's situation is changing. So you see that you prayed, you believed it. Oh, a job is coming. I found that revelation where Jesus, the, the master, told them, he said, why sittest thou idle? You see, you have to search. Lord, I'm jobless. Uncle, give me a job. You will, you will be frustrated forever. All those uncle and t thing. Many of us have never paid attention to this other option. You just hear it. But why don't you go back to the word of God? Lord, I don't have a job. Holy Spirit, guide me. And all of a sudden, the spirit of God, who, who searches the mind of God, begins to reveal to you. And you find that parable, for instance. You find the parable where Jesus was sending people into the vineyard. Is that true? And he met some people and said, why sittest thou idle? Is that not a scripture now that relates to your situation? True study. There are Bible concordances. There are Greek and Hebrew Bibles. There is Bible gateway. There are many Bible softwares that ease your search. Huh? Scriptures on joblessness. Google. Enter. And scriptures come out. No, no, no. Look, don't laugh. Except you don't want a job. And you bring them out. Some may make sense. Some may not make sense. Just scan them. And you find you don't need plenty. It may just be one. And now you are getting that scripture. Watch this. When you get that scripture, you meditate. Lord, open my eyes. What made the master to call them? Was there anything on their part that they did? Is there something in between the line in this story that my eyes has not seen? Hallelujah. And you get it. So God is able. You see, the might, the revelation of the might of God begins to down on you. If God gave these people jobs and he paid them salary, it means I can get a job and they will pay me salary. And you begin to pray. The moment you begin to pray, don't just get up and act and say, yes, I've caught it, application. I hereby write for a job in this company. You must give me. What grace is sponsoring that, 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 
that religiosity that's religion that's why you open the office and they'll say what are you saying you say i want a job they say walk out of here do you think and you and you now live disappointed you went with a lot of zeal god is good he has done me well and, and now you are there and, and you are disappointed because you did not finish the equation of faith are you hearing what i'm saying the next thing you would have done is to take that revelation to the place of prayer the threshing floor where your customized unique instruction is given somebody's breakthrough is already happening to him because god is showing you the missing link it will work and then i begin to pray this is how i do with koinonia messages i play the messages and while the messages are playing because there are some things that i said by the holy ghost the man of god is preaching and joshua selman is listening to him and while he's preaching and praying and i just hear something once you hear it you are ready to act because the moment an instruction comes that instruction can still refer you back to the bible right it doesn't just mean that you see an angel with wings. You can hear it and then an instruction will come. You can be praying and say, Lord, change my situation. As I go for koinonia, change my situation. And while you are praying, Lord, I believe you will change my life tonight. And while you are praying, a scripture just come. Jesus told the lepers, go and show yourself to the priest. You see that? That's a revelation that would have not made sense in a normal day. But to you, it is God's rema to you. And the Bible says, as they went. What, what does that mean? It means you should stand up and go. See that? And as you go, you commit the integrity of God to perform. So prayer reveals the strategy and it also supplies grace. Because there are some instructions, especially financial instructions. Some of you, you, have not, you are not givers. That's why it, 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 you don't get... There are some people here who are reckless givers. If you are a true giver, you know that you need grace. It's called giving grace. Because you are crying and saying, Lord, change my situation. Lord, I leave this 10,000. Something must happen. I don't have an uncle. I don't have an auntie. My father is dead. My mother is dead. I don't have anybody... I didn't have the opportunity to go to school. You are the only one I have. And Lord, if you do not help me, I have seen in the word of God that these are the situations and God says, take now thy Isaac, that son. Are you a fool? You are about to go and use that money and at least even buy a Bible with it. And God says, I know it's a Bible you want to buy. Forward march. Sometimes God can tell you to go and sow it into the life of somebody you don't love. You can't pretend you didn't hear it. See that? But in that instruction, you are now ready to obey. That's the last final phase of the equation of faith. Prompt and complete obedience. Please write. Number one is revelation. Number two is prayer. Number three is prompt and complete obedience. Having all readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Prompt and complete obedience. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Please let's hurry up. Let me tell you something brothers and sisters. This is the hardest part of the equation of faith. Settling down to study is not the hard part. This is the labor dimension of faith. Are you getting me? This is where you labor in the spirit. It says if ye be what? And not willing and desirous, not willing and hungry. If ye be willing, revelation makes you willing. But obedience, the hardest part, this is the link, brothers and sisters, this is the consummation of the faith equation. No matter what else you do that you call faith, if you do not obey, it is not called faith. Hallelujah. Confession. Sowing of seeds. Only become potent. When we are willing to obey. When we are willing to obey. Everybody say obedience. I have found out. That this is the link. 
between where you are and where you need to go. Brothers and sisters, obedience is not child's play. Obedience is hard work. That's why you must receive the grace in the place of prayer. Lord, I know you are about to speak and I cannot pretend that I'm not hearing you. So grant me the grace that when the instructions come, may they not be too heavy. Yes. 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 That's all I'll say to him. Yes. Yes. your link to the next level yes. when you hear that instruction yes. it means your season is about to change a guarantee listen your obedience is what judges the devil obedience obedience oh I feel the anointing of the spirit I'll hurry up so that we will pray brothers and sisters obedience obedience we are going to look at one case study and then we'll support you with a few Isaiah 51 please quickly 1 and 2 let's hurry up Isaiah 51 Let's look at a man who from the Bible is called the epitome of faith. Isaiah 51. Hallelujah, verse 2. Everyone read. It says, look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him and I increased him. That means God is giving you a case study. He say now that you know what faith is look at a biblical portrait on that study his life and you will find therein the keys so let's study abraham genesis 22 quickly please our first case study is abraham how did god turn an idol worshiper a mediocre in a small land called the awe of the chaldeans how did he become so prosperous how did he become the father of faith Hallelujah. Verse 2. It says, and he said, watch this. Okay, let's go to 12, verse 1 and 2, then we'll come back to 22. Genesis 12 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible, do you know that the person who was supposed to carry this, this fatherly mantle was his father, Terah? It was not Abraham. Terah missed it through disobedience. And the Bible says, now the Lord had said unto Abraham, get thee out of what? Are you seeing now? So we see that an instruction came. What was the instruction? Get out. Don't ask questions. Just move. It says, get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred father's house, unto a land that I will show you. He said, if you do this, here's the result. I will make of thee. Many times we cut the part of the scripture and just start claiming, I will. no, there was an instruction. Faith is a response to an instruction hmm. and i will make of thee a great nation i will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing next verse verse three now help us media in jesus name please walk together we have to really rush okay no problem and then he finished all the blessings. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. When will that happen? When will that happen? What was the first instruction? Get out. Abraham would have remained there and he would have died an idol worshiper at the awe, at awe of the Chaldeans. 
he got up and began to move go to verse 13 chapter 13 sorry chapter 13 not chapter 13 from verse 1 and Abraham went up out of Egypt he and his wife and all that he had and Lot went with him into the south Abraham took a step and he started moving Lord said, I'm going with you. For joining in the obedience alone, the man became blessed. Are you getting me now? Lord was not part of the covenant. Like Ruth held on to who? Naomi. She was not supposed to be part of the lineage. She said, no way. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, prophet, thank you. I'm, I'm leaving. Ruth said, no way. Your obedience is my Whatever you do, I will. 22 verse 1. Here was a test. The instruction was going to come for that promise to become real. At this point, Abraham had begun to experience some, some kinds of things, liftings and all of that. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt. The word tempt there is test. Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am, verse 2. And he said, What? Take your son. We are understudying Abraham. Abraham did not just carry Isaac. He would have slaughtered his son for nothing with no blessing attached. You move as instructed, not as you wish. Either instructed by the voice of the spirit or the principles of the word. It's still the same. We have been taking steps out of our wishes and not out of the voice of God. It says, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I'll show you. Verse 3, may that be your testimony. Read the first line. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Everybody say prompt obedience. Delayed disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure. When God speaks to you, stand up. The moment you sit down there, that grace gets exhausted and you find out you no longer can stand up. God told you to sow the seed. At that point, because it was in the place of prayer, you could do it. He said, wait, later on. When you came, you now calculated how much? 120. Kai! What did I hear like this? In the morning, you even said, it's even 200 I'll give. But something has happened. See that? Or go and lay your hands on the woman in Shika. And he said, in the name of Jesus, I'm going. I know that they are used to seeing me just as a brother, but I'm going as instructed. And later on, you just say, let me quickly just go and greet uh, Benga and see whether he has prepared lunch. After the lunch and everything, you get up and your mind starts telling you, you self, they have already called you stupid even before you behave stupid. Now, by the time you go to the hospital, what if they drive you? What if something happens to the car? I say, oh Lord, I'll just intercede. After all, it's, it will soon be time for prayers. You see, the, the beauty of grace is you take advantage of it immediately. The grace for obedience must be maximized promptly. He rose up early. There is a reason why the Bible tells us that. Remember, we're understudying Abraham. He rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and so on and so on and so forth. Uh, let's go to verse 5. Verse 5. Okay, verse 7. He said, and Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, my father, and he said, here I am. He said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb? The son didn't know he was the lamb. Next verse, please. Let's hurry up. And Abraham said, my God shall provide a lamb for his bond offering. So they went up together. Verse 9. And they came to a place which God had done this and that and that. And he bound Isaac. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth. Makalabo kataya. His obedience was about to be complete. Do you know if he did not leave that knife, everything he has done is multiplied by zero. It's painful when you start your obedience and stop. You've paid too much price. Why don't you finish it and, and commit God's integrity? Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, lay not thy hand on the lad, neither do thou anything to him. He said, for now. See that? For when? 
Not when you left your house. Not when you were at the base of the mountain. For now, I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son. In other words, you obeyed me even unto death. The blessing follows. 13. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and beheld a ram caught by the thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it at a burnt offering instead of his son. 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Are you seeing that now? Jehovah Jireh, you are singing it. Jehovah Jireh. Uh -uh. Don't just sing. What did he do that made that a revelation? My God shall supply all my needs. True. According to his riches in glory. But according to your obedience to the instructions that will bring that riches. 15. And the angel of the Lord called out of Abraham called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said by myself come on now this is God stepping in when your equation is complete Satan was not mentioned here it was a deal between God and he said by myself I have sworn because thou hast done done not said not confess oh I will kill Isaac in the name of Jesus Isaac you are dead in fact it's not that you are dying you are dead it's nonsense if there is no obedience he said, and has not withheld thy son. 17. He said that in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. As, the, as, as thy seed, as the stars of heaven. And as the sun which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall what? Possess the gates of thy enemy. Please, I want you to make up your mind beginning from today. That obedience will become the watchword of your life. This is Bible faith. Obedience. In Joshua chapter 6, just write it. I will not need to go there. The walls of Jericho. I want to show you. In fact, when you go to Hebrews 11, the Bible begins to give us the archives of men who did exploit with what we know called faith. And you find out that for all of them, there may be variations here and there. But one common thing is that they all took steps when a word came. They took steps. Jericho. In Joshua chapter 1, the Lord began to speak to Joshua. He said, as I was with my servant Moses, so I will be with you. Right? He said, only don't be afraid, be courageous and so on and so forth. And, and you know, he looked at all of them. Now watch this. God had told him he had given him Jericho. But if they just went, do you know they would have killed them? Please learn this. Never obey. Just try to obey without prayer. Involve God. You will get the unique instructions. That's where the power lies. In the word. In the instruction. Hallelujah. When Joshua went to pray in the night, what happened? The strategy was revealed to him. So on one side, you will take Jericho. But there is a strategy. It's a strategy that was never used in the Bible for anything again. It came as a rema. And he told him, he said, walk around. That's the strategy. You walk around today and it may not walk until it is a rema. But he walked around. Seven times, right? And on the seventh day, he went seven times. And he said, now, Tehila, let there be a shout. That was a strategy. Other times, he told Jehoshaphat, he said, put the worshippers in front. And let them begin to sing and say you are good and your mercies endure forever. That's the strategy. For you, your strategy may be come for counseling. God can tell you there is an anointing you will receive and it will change your life. Write your name for counseling. Even if there is nothing, just come. That's a strategy. For someone else, the Lord will say go on a three-day fast. In the three-day fast, I will speak to you and you will catch a light. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you see that many of the things we call faith is not faith. It's not faith. It's just metaphysics. The widow in Zarephath, 1 Kings 17 from verse 7 to 16. Just write it. will not turn there for time's sake. Remember what happened. God commanded Elijah to go to Zarephath. There he will meet a widow. And watch this. He came and he met a woman in a state of lack and insufficiency. She needed to put her faith to work. But she could not put her faith to work until a word would come. And the prophet said, 
Bring me water. The woman would have said, water for what? Water for what? And she took the water and as she was bringing it, he said, also bring me a morsel of bread. And she said, honestly, sir, this instruction is so much. He said, just do this. And the Bible says when she obeyed, her faith was released and she saw the supply. Are you seeing in scripture that all through the hallmark of faith is obedience? In my opinion, there is one word for faith, obedience. That's it. One word, obedience. If you do not obey the word, forget about the manifestation. When we are about to start Koinonia, I went to the Lord because the Lord had shown me in a vision. But where I saw in a vision, I could not relate with any physical place. And then I was, my mind had a lot of options here and there. But I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I know that you are able to do this. All I need is a strategy. And I was praying, praying in the spirit, just lying down and worshiping. And all of a sudden, I had CGC. The Lord spoke to me. And I said, Lord, I don't even know the people here. How are we going to get access to the place? And the Lord told me, I've gone before you. You see, you don't need to do anything. Just stay there. The word has come. And see where we are today. The product of faith. It will work any day. It will work any time. One time I was praying and I said, Lord, how do we do now? There are sick people and your people need to be equipped. And the Lord said, turn the last Friday of every month to become a special time to minister to the people. When the counseling was getting too much, every day I said, Lord, what is, what is this strategy? And first we had moved to Saturday. And then the Lord helped us to arrive. Who does counseling on Monday by 11 o'clock? Does that make sense to you? But that's what God said. Look, brothers and sisters, if he speaks, start moving. Let your mind understand later on. Are you getting what I'm saying? Look at Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus looks at a man who is blind. Sir, I am blind. And then Jesus makes mud. Right? Puts in his eyes and says, go and wash. Go and wash. Go and wash. I'm blind. If I could see, would I come to you? They let me. He didn't say, neighbors, take him to go and wash. He said, find your way there. Same thing Elisha told Naaman. Go and bath. You can choose to be arrogant about it or you can humble yourself and enter that water seven times and change your story. Now man said, but there are no rivers. The, the, the servant said, I'm walking with you. Soon I will leave you. Please, you better be healed so that this thing will be better for us. You are a liability to me. This and that and that. Go and bath. And he went. Watch this. He went and started obeying. But nothing happened till his obedience was complete. Six times he would have gotten up and just gone with mud like a fool. A man who brought victory. Right? He would have just moved and would say, Ah, captain, where are you from? He said, well, One stupid prophet gave me an instruction. After six times I said, Come on, my pride will not allow me. Many of you started obeying. One step to see the hand of God, the devil brought you back. And look, nothing happened. One step. Some of you came for miracle service, for instance. And we said, in the name of Jesus, you shout that name, Jesus. And you just stood and said, I beg there is. People were just shouting like fools. And you were there. And said, ah, everybody was getting blessed, getting healed. Instructions. Instructions. The secret of true faith. When you get that word, obey. The truth is, we have not been obedient enough. And this is why we've not been seeing it. Look at the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and did what? The bread did not multiply in the hands of Jesus. Did it? No, sir. He gave them. He said, go and start sharing. Go and start sharing. Look at the 10 lepers. He told them, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. And they went at that word. The Bible said, as they went. Not before, as they he says, this sign shall follow, not go before. You have to take steps. A miracle always comes, or the miracle always comes, after the instruction or condition is met. Never forget this. The miracle always comes after the instruction has been obeyed. Fully.
Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. Oh, oh yes, Lord. I will obey. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. is defined as the action you take right we're concluding faith is defined as the action you take based on your conviction of God's word and in line with the instructions required by God right faith is the action you take not the desire to act the very action you take based on your conviction of god's word and in line with the conditions or instructions required by god if you do that you have manifested what the bible calls bible faith otherwise you will just be playing games and talking games I told the Lord, whatever you demand of me, I will do. I was in Abuja and um, one of my very nice shoes that I love, I was polishing the thing to package it and the Lord told me, this shoe goes for so, so, so person. Someone sowed a very major seed into my life and as soon as I received it, God said, now you are an usher, pass it to so, so, so person. Years ago, I would have cried, but I've grown. Mm. Because every time his instruction comes, that's my status changing. That's it changing. Hallelujah. Last year, when we were starting Koinonia, the Lord said we should carry all the seed in the house and sow everything. Everything. The whole money. I told the finance department, I said the Lord has given an instruction. Pack everything. If God has told you you will marry a man of God, start praying for grace. Don't just say when. Pray for grace. Because you are, the man himself is, is enough to be a ministry for you. A true man of God is strange. Right? You wake up and see a man roaming like a zombie in your room. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Honey, what's going on? I'm okay, it's alright. And you are wondering whether you are the one who is going as a sacrifice or not. Listen, you will never receive breakthrough beyond the level of your last obedience. Never, never, never. Don't reject the instructions of God. Every time you search the Bible, look for conditions, not just promises alone. What are the conditions tied to them? Hallelujah. I sowed that seed and in less than two hours more than 1,000% of that seed came into my life. Hallelujah. Crazy instructions that God has given me. Crazy instructions. I remember when I traveled to Canaan land as the instruction of the Lord. I went with a seed and I went there when I was done outside in the public, not in one small corner. The Lord told me, go on your knees on that ground. And I went down there. I've shared the story. You know about it. I've shared with you how the Lord instructed me to give everything. Everything. Hallelujah. I carried my Isaac. Dragged it into the church. And came and placed it on the altar like a fool. Don't want any man's glory until you can obey the instructions he obeyed. What you need to pray for is Lord grace there was a time the Lord instructed me I locked myself for three days non-stop my eyes did not see the sun did not see the sun because the Lord said so no sun no food no nothing the only thing that I did was to take my bath and that was because the bathroom was inside the room where I stayed no nothing are you willing to obey if 
ye be willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land hallelujah i told you about how i trekked from the roundabout in pz right at the instruction of the lord the roundabout in pz i trekked to aviation praying in tongues I take this city. The keys of this city is given unto me. Don't you sit down and see people coming and think it's just because I'm a young man. It's not charm. When you obey him, his integrity is committed. Who is God speaking to tonight? Stop grumbling and complaining. Cry and say, Lord, what is the word for the next level? Because if he gives you that word, you will rise to the next Hallelujah. I remember someone who one time his father was sick and he played an instrument for from night the lord gave him an instruction to play an instrument from about 10 till about 6 in the morning he said just play that instrument non-stop and that guy was worshiping by the morning the father was healed look at me the arm of the lord is not too short koinonia are you hearing me there are pastors there are people we like miracles but we hate instructions we hate instructions. My life moves at the pace of the instructions of the Lord. Instructions of the Lord. I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday. I saw one suit that I like. New suit. They just sold it to me. And the Lord showed me the face of someone in protocol. Ah! I said, oh God, this is going. I called him immediately. I said, where are you? I said, come quickly. This is for you. And he came. And I gave you a surprise. I said, Baba, before any unbelief will enter, and I'll collect my team back. Go. I love you, Jesus. That was from the spirit. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Oh, it takes faith to move mountains, brothers and sisters. I love you, Jesus. There is no instruction I will not obey. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Listen. It says, through faith, they subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They shut the mouths of lions. He said, what more can I say? For time will fail me to speak to you about Gideon and Barak and Jephthah. Ordinary men who obey God to the latter. Sister, when you obey God, that man must come. It doesn't matter where he is. Forget about witches and wizards. Concentrate on your obedience. Concentrate. There are some of you, God told you, Drag your family members and bring them here. The word came with the grace for it to happen. You say, Master, we have toiled all night. There are times God can use a man to speak to you. They tell you, go and listen to relationship and family life. I've listened to it before. No, no. Remember, you are responding to a word. Don't forget. He may tell you to do what you have always done. But this time around, there is an anointing upon it. You will do it and see very seemingly crazy instructions. God can tell you, just sit down on these drums. And just be playing and clashing the cymbal and praying in tongues. Do it. Do it. If you are ashamed of men, forget about greatness. You will never carry certain levels of the anointing. I went for six hours in Joss, standing at the Renhard Bonke Kuse because I was desperate. And, and I set my gaze on that man because there was something I wanted to land on. I was not sitting down asking stupid questions that people ask when they go to places. Ah, this, man, this white man, why is he wasting our time? Is there Rema or no Rema? That was not my, I was at my, my, my face was set like a flint. Brothers and sisters, listen. Wait, the financial prosperity series I'm about to preach, I truly believe it will cause a revolution. There are new things that the Lord has shown me that I put my hand on my head. I say, my goodness, Joshua Selman, where have you been? Your life must change. We're in the season of the rain. Obedience is the platform. Don't blame anybody. Take responsibility. 
There are only three prayer points tonight we are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Sorry about the time. We are really working on beating the time. But I want you to pray. Begin to thank God for the word tonight. Begin to thank him for the word tonight. It's time for new levels of grace. New fountains. New levels of impact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray. Prayer point number one. Lord, help me and give me a receptive spirit to hear your instructions and to see your conditions as demanded by scripture. Lift your voice. Please pray seriously. This is the time to pray and not walk around inside and outside. Let our spirits be opened, O oh God. That as we study, may we see instructions. May we not just see promises, but conditions. Your level is changing, I tell you. Your level is changing, I tell you. God is not a man that you should lie. He's not the son of man that you should repent. Lord, I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I'm receptive to your instruction. Bretes <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen. There are conditions tied to you walking in divine health. There are conditions tied to influence and increase and honor. There are conditions tied to prosperity. There are conditions tied to longevity. Find out. We have preached these things. Our messages are full of these keys. Prayer point number two. Lord Jesus, speak to me. Speak to me. I'm ready to obey. Speak to me. Let your word supply grace. Reveal the strategy. Pray. Show me the key to the next level of breakthrough. To the next level of influence, to the next level of encounter, to the next level of the anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number three. I want you to pray this with all your heart. Cry for a fresh supply of grace for prompt and complete obedience. 
Some of you, God has given you instructions. There are seeds to sow. There are places to go. There are tapes to listen to. There are encounters. There are retreats to have. You have not obeyed, so you will never see his glory. Lift your voice and cry. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive Hallelujah. Watch this. It is after you obey that you can now begin to confess. And then you can now sow a seed and tie a seed to it. Except if the sowing of the seed is the instruction. Or that if I'm believing God say for a house and I find out God gives me an instruction. Go and get an architectural design and see the kind of house you want. That's an instruction. Don't sit down and start giving foolish arguments. Now I go and I say, Lord, I found what I wanted. God will say, go and estimate. How much will it cost? Now you, you estimate and you say it will cost 15 million. <laughs> you are sitting down. All you have home and abroad is 500 naira. Forget about it. And it, look, the blessing is in the instruction. It's not in what you have. Whether, you, you, whether it is 1,000 or 1 billion, it is still faith that will bring it. Hallelujah. And now you begin to pray. And while you pray, God will say, relax. He said, don't worry. Just relax. It will come as a seed. You have heard the word. You stand still. And you begin to prophesy. Or God will say, now go and sow a seed for it. Or you want to get married, for instance. And, and, and you are praying and you are thanking God. You are saying, Lord, thank you for this. And then you find out God gives you an instruction in the place of prayer. Maybe go and wash the plate. Go to one woman who is already married. He may even be your friend. He said, just go on a Saturday and help them sweep and wash their plate. That's the instruction. If you are too ashamed to do it, forget about marriage. It may be crazy, but go and do it. After you have done that, then you can now begin to prophesy. And you can now connect with a seed. And say, Lord, I sow a seed into this. And I speak, my marriage is coming. The man that God is bringing, like our sister said, is a blessed man. He's a godly man. Your obedience is complete. Something is wrong with your family. Your husband or your wife is misbehaving. And all of that. You don't sit there and say, me and you will enter the same trouser. What has entering the same trouser got to do with, with the solution? You don't need to enter the same trouser. You need a word from God. All these stupid cultural things that we put, we must enter the same trouser. And do what? Is it going to solve the problem? Get a word from God. Where you are confused, come for counseling. This is the situation. What do you think? What is, the, what is the scriptural mystery? What is the principle that is responsible for the delivery of this? Right? That's why we pray. That's why we come here all the time. We are dispensing mysteries. As these mysteries are dispensed, it's falling on different people. You catch it and you walk with it. It has changed the lives of people from nothing. It has taken people to wherever they will go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very fearful and touching testimony. A gentleman listened to my message. He's been following my teachings and he's been listening to my messages. And they are trusting God. He's a real estate person. He's trusting God for breakthroughs and all of that. And then a miracle just happened to him. Within a short time, they gave him 60 hectares of land to develop and sell. His profit from that is 300 million. He's a young man like me. The word. As if that will finish. When I, when I got to Abuja, he made sure, every time I go to Abuja, he makes sure he's the one driving me around. He said, I must drive you. The last time I went, he said they gave him another 40 hectares, making 100 hectares. What is it that God cannot do? Your obedience. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
your obedience your obedience your obedience i hear a lot of testimonies testimonies you were i think many of us have, have we've heard about the testimony of the woman who for eight years was barren selena's auntie or so and this woman supernaturally by acting the word of god had triplets they are all alive today triplets to recover for the eight years what is it that god cannot do don't come we say right prayer requests is when you are here that you just scrabble in what is even your own you are just playing games with god that's why very few people get testimonies change your attitude from today let it not be Friday by five. You say it's time for koinonia. Be intentional about it. There are people who come in for miracle service. We all fast on Thursdays. But on Friday, they, they prepare. When I'm coming for koinonia, it's as if, do you know, you see me sit down sometimes here. My body is shaking. I'm just waiting for worship to finish. Testimonies when people are shouting. You see, there's answer. I want to just dispense what God has brought. But there are people who just sit down. You bring a teaspoon and you want you want to have an ocean of blessings enlarge your capacity let's pray one more prayer point before we round up hold up the hand of your neighbor you're going to pray and say lord this is the season where you are changing his level changing her level go ahead and prophesy prophesy how great you are How great you are Oh, your level must change How great you are Koinonia, it's time for a new season It's the season of the rain Don't be a spectator My financial level must change my spiritual life must change my influence must change the grace of god upon my life must move higher i'm ready to obey how great you are oh, oh, oh. how great you are hey, how great you how great you are how great you are shake it to the leg of the baba baba how great you are lift your hands and let me prophesy over your life there is see for koinonia god is shifting us i know it i feel it god is shifting us you can choose to believe it you can sit down there and let other people just through the tapes or you can connect to the anointing and say this is my season i place a demand on everything that is at work in this house father in the name of jesus i pray let the spirit of faith the capacity to obey God without reservation, the meekness, the childlikeness to obey God, let it be released upon your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that as a result of this teaching tonight, let there be a rain of testimonies, let there be miracles upon miracles upon miracles financial miracles miracles of multiplied graces miracles of marriages miracles of breakthroughs miracles of favor miracles of lifting in the name of jesus christ i pray that the influence of the kingdom comes upon you in the name of the lord jesus christ you will begin to command influence across your territory by the mystery of the oil of gladness let it take you above your fellows hallelujah i pray in the name of jesus that the mantle of honor that which makes men is said and jabez was more honorable than his brethren i pray for you in the name of jesus that beginning from tonight 
everywhere you go you will find men who will honor you in the name of Jesus Christ you will find men who will honor you I pray for everything that is dead or dying in this place I don't care what it is by the same power that raised Christ from the dead I speak to everything that is dead in your life I command it tonight come back to life dead academic situations come back to life now dead financial situations come back to life now dead family situations come back to life now hear me whatever has covered your glory and has stopped men from seeing the hand of God I tear that veil into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ whatever has stopped men from favoring you they used to bless you but something happened mysteriously the same people are still around but the blessings have stopped I connect you by faith to that flow of the blessing in the name of Jesus Christ it's a season where you must bear fruit I prophesy upon you be fruitful be fruitful multiply in the name of Jesus replenish I command that you subdue every force of darkness and every force of witchcraft and every curse and every enchantment and I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus have dominion everywhere you go let there be an anointing upon you anyone that comes under the jurisdiction of your influence I compel them to bless you I compel them to honor you in the name that is above all names I command that a book of remembrance Makato Toto Balakata like Mordecai whoever has done good and your, 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 your reward has not come tonight as you sleep in the heavenlies let the book of remembrance be open may my God use strangers to bless you may he use strangers to bring your business back to life may my God bring strangers to bless your family and I pray for you greater levels of the anointing you belong to a ministry that works in an ever increasing anointing may that be at work in your life I command that the level you are in the anointing you have lingered yet for too long step up to a new level step up to a new level a new level of the healing anointing a new level of the anointing of prophecy a new level of the gifts of the spirit in the name of Jesus I release this power from here on stage upon this altar I prophesy it let it touch you and let it change you in the name of Jesus Lord your people must bear result I command you be fruitful I command it be fruitful students be fruitful workers be fruitful in the name of Jesus businessmen be fruitful everything that has refused to work I invoke the laws of the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ I command in a miraculous way let things begin to work whoever needs to call you this week whoever needs to connect you whoever needs to come to your business whoever needs to give you a job I prophesy in the name of the Lord Jesus may my father bring them to you hallelujah lift your hands and give him praise lift your hands and give him praise your life will never be the same hallelujah now very quickly while standing all of you there are people here inside and outside who are saying man of God for me I need to reconnect with God either you have never truly made Jesus Lord of your life probably you were invited or you've been coming here again and again but you are saying enough is enough I want to take God seriously or there are some of you 
who have been here you love god but for some reason challenges and pressures push you and you push god out it's time to reconnect it never will happen outside of christ never will happen in one minute we're out of time wherever you are as they begin to celebrate them please leave your seat inside and outside don't wait for anybody to start coming before you come leave your seat and come and say i want to truly get serious with jesus christ find your way quickly please save time they are coming from outside celebrate them please clear the way for them celebrate them keep coming come and line up before jesus christ please as you come here be very very serious be very very serious as you come out keep coming clap for them koinonia god is harvesting his people to change their stories say say no to the devil don't sit back there when you should be out you know the voice of god you can't pretend you are not hearing it you know the voice of god make your way to the front please win that war in your life this is about your destiny forget about whoever knows you or who doesn't know you make your way to the front jesus is calling you for a new beginning the devil has been cheating you this is 2015 is the year of the rain you can't allow the devil to destroy your life again if there are still more people outside as i lead them to pray please make your way to the front it matters your relationship with god don't say it does not matter it's not just about breakthrough it matters those of you in front here i salute you some of you are rededicating your lives to jesus some of you are giving your heart to jesus for the first time look at me i want you to make a true commitment from the depth of your heart don't everybody you see here made this decision i made it there is nothing embarrassing about it as i look at us i see addictions i see all kinds of things but the power of god is able to set you free lift your right hand and pray pray consciously you are not reciting a poem pray from the depth of your spirit say after me lord jesus I return to you I truly love you from the depths of my heart today I repent of my sins I make Jesus Lord of my life I have discovered that it does not pay to walk outside of your love you died for me and I receive your gift of righteousness and eternal life I make Jesus Lord of my life and from today I declare that the power of sin is broken over my life I receive eternal life into my spirit from today forward ever and backward never I break free from wrong associations I break free from everything that has kept me down it's time for me to move forward my destiny is calling and i'm determined to get there now keep your hands lifted father thank you for bringing these ones out they came to make a public declaration of their stand and their faith i break the hold and the power of sin over their lives i command the devil that has been oppressing you and has stopped you from experiencing god out of them right now in the name of jesus I cause that spirit, the power of sin be broken over their lives. From today, I release upon you grace to love God, grace to serve God, grace to be passionate. Let, let a hunger for the things of the spirit come upon you. Beyond the appetites of the flesh, I truly break the law of sin and death from your life and I release the grace of God upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Now look at me, please. Tuesdays by 3, by 4. Automatically, please, it's a rule here. Once you get born again for one month, you are automatically a member of the prayer department. This is to help you. After one month, you can decide to leave or you can join any other department. But you have to be with them for one month. 4 to 6 at CGC. Meanwhile, I want you to follow the ushers. By the grace of God, from next week, I'll, I hope that when I'm around, or will put a structure to follow up all those who give their lives to Christ. Would that be fine? So that even if it is on Monday or Tuesday, 
oh sorry at Rema at Rema Chapel so that at least I can have a word we, we don't want you to get born again and just be wasted we want to preserve you and guide you praise the Lord bring that lady please just a minute I know we're out of time let this lady be delivered from every wicked spirit look at this lady tied from head to toe let her go this is Koinonia out release her right now release her destiny that spirit of addiction leaves her in the name of Jesus. Don't waste our time. Live here now. Leave her. Leave her. I curse that spirit out and never return in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, so gentlemen, thank you so, so much. She will never be the same again. I curse lust. I curse addiction. I curse this marine spirit. I see a lot of snakes moving around this lady. And this deliverance is not just for her, it's for her family. And this, this stubbornness, she's free from it in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. Don't be afraid of bringing people here. This is truly Bethel. They will never come here and go back the same. Praise the Lord. So follow the lady waving her hands, everybody. Koinonia, celebrate them. Follow this lady. Very quickly, we're out of time. Hallelujah.